pleasant morning to you out there. The program is the Daily on Echo Television International, where we keep you updated with all the news and current affairs from our papers this morning. I am Sarah Elisha Dasham, and I'll be doing the program alongside Rachel Tansy. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Sarah. Hope you got to rest well. I did. How about you? I did, too. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And to our viewers at home, do remember you can be part of the program by joining us live on Facebook or on YouTube and then drop your views or your comment on any of the story that is of interest to you this morning. And we will be going quick into the paper, starting with the Blueprint newspaper. On Blueprint newspaper, UBA restates commitment to SMEs financing across Africa. Kogi Imobayelsa, IGP, INEC warn politicians against violence. I alternable constructive criticism says body judge you can find details on page 18. Zenit access MTN among top 10 most profitable coins in Nigeria. The big story on the paper foreign exchange dollar holders should await tenable shocker coming from the presidency says president has bright ideas to reverse dwindling narrow value. CBN targets 95% access to financial services. You can find details of the big story on page 6. Blue economy will employ 350 million people, generate $2.5 trillion annually. This is a report coming from NIMAS. You can find more details on page 18. And when you look at 350 million people, that's way above the... Um, population of, of Nigeria, Nigeria of so course. I believe um, Nigerians can be employed, fully employed by mm. the blue economy and also even foreigners. So we are looking forward to see how this goes. You can find details of this report on page 8. And at the downside of Blueprint newspaper, fish sellers protest price hike in Ogun State. NNPCL Neti orders working to reconcile 2021 report. Navy arrests eight stowaways in Lagos, and that's all news on Blueprint newspaper. All right, let's take a look at the Voice of Liberty. The first three there says federal government okays contract jobs for retired doctors, nurses, and health workers will record that last month the federal government was looking at um we are actually going down the issue of the japa syndrome where a lot of medical practitioners have left the shores of nigeria therefore we'll be having contract jobs for retired doctors nurses and health workers and they have okay that contract so very soon they will swift into action you can look up more of that story inside the paper Federal government to launch birth, death, and marriage registration portal for, for those who want to know more about that. You can do well to grab the paper and read detail of that story. And coming from Nasarawa State, gunmen invade university community, kill one, and kidnap others. I hope that this is an eye opener to our federal government and state government to actually work together to see how we can protect the university communities and the students as well. The big story here say attack on Ajero, labor declared nationwide strike from November 14. In a solidarity move to protest the brutality of the president of Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, Joe Ajero, the organized labor comprises its leadership and that of the Trade Union Congress, TUC, have declared a total nationwide strike effective next Tuesday, November 14, 2023. Inside the paper still we have from the international community, Israel versus Hamas, Nigerian Senate demands ceasefire, you can find detail in the paper. And on the offshore election, IGP restrict movement in Imo, Kogi and Bayelsa from Friday. You can look up that story in the paper. Federal government commences 40% revenue deduction from varsity, you can find more of that story inside the paper. And House of Reps asks WK to issue C of O's to FCT property owners. You can do well to find more detail of any of the story that is of interest to you in the paper. On Daily Independent, Tinibu's terrible mistake plunged Nigerians into misery. A statement coming from Sagi says Atiku Obi's desperation almost crumbled Nigeria. And on Kogi Guba poll, odd favor APC's Ododo. You can start with the details on the front page. Attack on Ajero 
NLC TUC starts showdown against Imo government Uzodima. Says action began midnight Tuesday, November 7, nationwide strike to commence November 14. You can find details of the big story inside the paper. Again, 10 persons killed in fresh bandits attack on Benue communities. We have rampaging bandits kill five, abduct five others in Katsina village. You can find details on page 29. And on Guba polls, IGP restrict vehicular movement in Kogi, Bayelsa and Imo. Deploys three DIGs for election duty in three states. Fish sellers protest price increase in Abekuta. Senate probes alleged lopsided recruitment in federal civil service. You can find more details on page 7. Federal government booted cost of governance may impede development. Coming from analysts seek measure of MDA's reduction in government expenditure. And at the dance out of the paper, Kogi, Imo, Bayelsa, Guba polls, we won't fold our hands, watch elections manipulated. Statement coming from PDP, you can find details on page 6, and that's all the news on Daily Independent. Richard, talking about the cost of governance, and here it's in analysts saying federal government plotted the cost of governance may impair development and seeking mergence of MDAs. I will recall that we already had some mergence of some MDAs coming from the federal government. The fact that they said some of these MDAs and parasitas are more like working, having the same work, so the federal government felt like merging them. I think beyond the merging of the MDAs, there are other ways that this analyst can actually look into or the federal government of Nigeria can look into cutting down the cost of government. And I mean a lot of analysts have come out, economics have come out, a lot of people have come out to state the fact that there are certain things the government needs to do if really we are serious about cutting down the cost of governance. We see some of the expenditure our you know politicians and leaders are actually going into. That will tell you that we are not ready to cut down the cost of governance. And what even pains the more is the fact that most of this money we are spending is actually borrowing so it was better if we are borrowing and then we are you know putting this money into the infrastructures things that can actually give back to something that we can actually look into creating more revenue for the country but then we keep borrowing and then nigerians cannot actually keep a finger on what exactly have we been borrowing for this past years i remember during the buhari administration he said he was actually given the reason why the borrowing was on, he said, because they were using the money into some infrastructures. And Nigeria kept asking, where are the infrastructures? Mm. We're still having bad roads. We're still having some of our school in a very poor state. We're still having quite a number of things. Are we going to go down to even look at some of our primary health clinics? You can't even access some of them. Presently, doctors are on strike. So you begin to ask, so exactly what are we using this money we keep borrowing from? And I'm seeing Anna D. says talking about the federal government. So I'm hoping that beyond merging of the MDAs, of course I will agree that there are certain MDAs that need to be merged. I mean, there was a time where we were looking at merging maybe the VIO and the federal road safety because sometimes it's very difficult for you to begin to cut out. So what really is this job? Because it seems to be doing one and the same job somehow, even though we know that one is meant to give some of the papers and all of that. But then... That is just one among many other, you know, parasitas mm -hmm. that maybe may be merged. But I hope that beyond the merging of the MDAs, we begin to see government being serious about cutting down the cost of governance if really we want to grow as a nation. You know, Sela, when you look at cutting down the cost of governance, and when you look at the MDAs, I'm a little bit skeptical concerning merging MDAs. Because when you look at the real things, right, that consume money when it comes to governance, it's not really the MDAs as such, if you mm. are to go by it. Because we have MDAA, we have MDAB, for example. And they all have what they focus on doing and making sure happens in Nigeria. Now, if you merge this MDA, if MDA have MDAA, for example, have 10 projects, they are working on, let's say, for example, the MDA A have 10 projects of building 100 boreholes in communities. I'm just giving, I'm just making an example. And then MDA and MDA B mm -hmm. has um, the project of, commute of, of, of building 100 um, schools somewhere. Now, if you merge these MDAs, it doesn't take away the need that there are 10 boreholes somewhere that need to be done. 
it doesn't take away the need that there are schools somewhere that these MDAs need to work on and get it done. And when you match these MDAs, are you going to sack these people? Because these are people that have been employed under these MDAs. Are you going to cut down workers, which automatically you are increasing the numbers of unemployment if you match them we have directors we have senior officers in all of these various places are you going to demote them or are you going to keep them because either way whether we match them or not the size still remains the same except if the government is matching them and then cutting down on the important projects they need to do or um, cutting down these um, employed people so now we are not only having Problems that need to be solved in the society not being solved based on what these MDAs are doing. And then we are also looking at unemployment rate going high because if you're merging them to cut down the cost of governance, then we are also having people losing their yeah, sure. jobs. But I believe when we are talking about cutting down the cost of governance, we are looking at the offices, be it at the state level and the federal government, that we are having our government creating every single day. We saw yesterday on the paper where we are seeing Ill, illegitimate um, spending of 1.5 billion naira for the office of the first lady. lady. You understand, Sele? We are looking at the luxurious lifestyle of our leaders in key positions at the expense of taxpayers. And when we look at, for example, you gave an example of perhaps merging like vehicle inspection officers mm -hmm. and then the road safety. Let's not forget that the majority of the revenue we have in Nigeria and the allocation that comes from the FAC is as a result of tax. And these are tax from the VIOs and the road safety so if you match them for example whether we like it or not we are reducing the revenue in the country when we merge for example such um, um body together because they also have tax they generate for the federal government the road safety half tax they generate for the federal government and whether we like it or not apart from oil revenue we are strongly depending on revenue generated by tax in this country. I believe that the government should wake up and look at better ways of cutting down the mm. cost of governance. Mm. Let's stop beating around the bush. We know exactly Where what exactly is. what is consuming mm. money in this country and what we need to cut down when it comes to cutting down the cost of governance. But as long as we keep beating around the bush concerning what needs to be done, the actions that needs to be taken, then we will not see significant amount of growth or changes in the economy. And I just hope that we have an administration that is willing to put in the work. You, know, you, you, just, you just took the word right out of my mouth. I mean, we need to cut down, especially our leaders, some of the luxurious lifestyle they live because it will shock you to hear some of the allowances they collect. And then you wonder why collect certain allowances and then still looking at what you are being yeah. paid eventually. Well, our fingers will be crossed and we hope that we'll begin to see better things coming from them. Well, let's take a look at the next paper, which is the Nigerian News Direct. And on Nigerian News Direct, we have the off-cycle election. IGP births road and water transport movement in Imo, Kugi, and Bayelsa. You can find that story at the back page of Nigerian News Direct. Still inside the paper, we have federal government approves 5 billion naira compensation for the fraud Nigerian airway workers. You can find more of that on page 2. Again, fish sellers protest soaring prices. You can find that on page 2. I think, Richard, this is really quite mm -hmm. a story that needs to be discussed for it to be repeated on, on our paper, papers. Yes. And you begin to ask and wonder what really is causing the hike in the price of fish are we saying that some of the fish are no longer present in our waters or something but that is just to tell you that inflation is touching everything there's yes. nothing that right now you cannot just i mean i was in the market and we during the weekend richard and you know the prices of things will just get you wow wow and then you'll be wondering i was just in the market about three days back and this was the price of a particular good and then today the price is actually it's going different. up there well i hope that um Nigerians will survive, and I hope that um, the federal government have better measures to actually look into this. If we are having fish sellers protesting the price is high, they begin to wonder what will happen to rice farmers, to begin to wonder what will happen to meat sellers, to begin to wonder what will happen to almost all the traders in the market. And no wonder, you know, federal government or like the NLC and the trade union are pushing for that strike because a lot of things is no longer funny for them. But we hope that um, 
before Tuesday. I keep being hopeful about all of this thing, Richard, despite the fact that sometimes you can't help but wonder it seems as if the federal government is adamant about certain things that are happening or maybe because it hasn't gotten to them. But believe you me, it's touching everybody, whether you are high, whether you are low. The price of goods is really touching everybody. So I'm hoping that the government will look beyond the present situation and see how we can provide solution. Yesterday, we saw the price of gas by December will be 18,000 naira. Yesterday, a friend of mine was saying he got one, um, one kg for gas is about 1,100. So you begin to tell Richard yeah. that this thing is now becoming more realistic than stories we've been hearing. So I'm really hoping that the government really have the people in mind and that it will come up with other measures and policies that will kind of, you know, relieve the pain on the common man eventually. You know, Sela, if I'm not mistaken, over 70% of the fish we consume in the country is imported. Mm. Yeah, so it's not surprising that the price we are, is going high. Just as every other thing will go high, we are consuming fish that has been imported into the country, and then therefore the price is going to be high. And then the, the fish that we consume that is, is we 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 farm them within is mostly this live cut fish where we have um, and we consume them and then the ones exactly yeah. that we process them and we make them dried or we call them stock um, um smoked no fish, fish or something like that these are majorly the ones we make within nigeria from all these states that are into um fishing and all of that but apart from that majority every other fish mm. you see even the stock fish we consume are imported into the country and all of that every other fish that come processed and packaged are mainly imported fishes so we are just looking forward to seeing that we we will not stop um it goes back to agriculture seller that's mm. why i keep saying why is the government of Nigeria sleeping on agriculture? The same way you are declaring state of emergency on education, we need to see that on agriculture because everything goes back to our agricultural system because be it the wood we consume, sell it, be it the papers, be it this fabric we're sitting on, it's all agriculture because the raw materials are being farmed. These raw materials are not being dug up. It's one plant that gave us this chair we're sitting on. It's trees that are giving us the wood we use every day. So everything falls back to agriculture because there are countries that their um, mm. mineral resources mm. are timber. So there are people making tons of money with wood and all of that. And we can talk about rubber. We can talk about everything. There are people who are out there making shoes right now with um, materials that before couldn't be because they have taken agriculture to the next level. And that is why it's important for the Nigerian government to wake up and declare state of emergency on agriculture. If not, we will continue to see the prices of food soaring because sugar as much as it looks like we have sugar cane everywhere, we don't have it enough no, no, for industrial level where we are still importing the raw sugar into the country to be able to process it to refine sugar and all of that. So it still boils back to agriculture and every other thing that affects us. If we can wake up and be able to reach a level where we are producing our raw materials, I don't think we'll have fish sellers on complaining. the papers complaining because fishery is also one part of agriculture. In fact, fish is a very healthy meal se um, a meat seller, for example, which if we have it enough, we can say goodbye to red meat and everybody in Nigeria will be healthy, but we do not have it enough. That's why we are still on the red meat and people are falling sick every day because of things like that. So there's so much work that needs to be done and I just hope hope that um, we have people who are capable and ready to do the work. You know, Rachel, when we say people, it seems as if we're talking about somebody far away. But these are people within us, leaders we have elected into position that we are hoping can actually think on behalf of the entire Nigeria. Yes. Because we can't be all there taking the decision. And that was why I was very worried when we opened the borders to those 43 items, Rachel. You remember I said that this is more like making Nigeria to now become a dumping ground for every because, good because yes. everybody feels the border is open now. And we remember last week or so, the House of of rep actually summoned the CBN governor on particular concerning this opening of the border to these 43 items. I mm. mean, you make mention of the wood and then it will be to your mind to say that even as small as to pick, we we're importing into yeah. the country. So what exactly are we producing in the country? Exactly. If only we'll stop getting a lot. And then most times, Rachel, these processed fish are even more dangerous to their health because 
you don't know how long they have been frozen and then here in Nigeria or here in this part of the country or this continent we are used to having fresh made food we all someone of the CBN government we want to hear what the house of rep is hoping to do after this well, let's look at a, a big story on Nigerian News Direct where we have attack on Ajero. NLC TUC comments strike action in Imu today, threatening to embark on nationwide strike by November 14. If you want to know what the EVE is all about, you can do well to look up that story on page 2. Identify sack of 11,000 ghost workers, non payment of pensioners, and others as reason for the strike, which they stated since last week. Why they want to go on strike um, in Imo State? Certain people were being um, talking about pensioners and also civil servants were being declared as ghost workers, and NLC is not happy with the decision that the governor took. So they are going on a strike, and we hope that something meaningful will come out before. We're having about three days to the election there, and then this will actually affect it. Still on Nigerian News Direct, subsidy payment rose to 400 billion naira monthly, got 3.7 billion naira in May 2023, coming from the NNPCL. And we have the BMAWCA MPA launches $1.1 billion port rehabilitation plan for enhancing trade competitiveness you can find out on page 13 and over 9 million nigerians at risk of exclusion from national identity register this is a report and i think every nigeria should be interested in that story you can do a uh, grab the paper read more detail of that and that's all on nigerian news direct on the matrix newspaper nnpcl unveils new nambe grade of crude targets euro you can start with the details on the front page and in Imo, IPOP won core members, INEC officials over election rigging. By Elsa, Imo Kogi Guba elections preparation intensifies. IGP announces restriction of movement. INEC says 137, 973 party agents to participate in election. The big story on the paper attack on Ajero Ozodima organized labor face off worsens. The writer under the story election threatened as labor grounds activities in Imo 72 hours before polls. Nationwide strike looms from next week. Labor flees blatant attempt to impose favored candidates on workers. You can find all the details of the big story on page 2. NUPRC gets three executive commissioners. Federal government IOM partners to evacuate 161 Nigerian migrants stranded in Libya. NPC Tinubu to launch bird dead registration portal tomorrow. You can find more details on page 16. Obi running mate Baba Ahmed calls for Tinubu Shetima resignation. Appeal court sacks PDP senator declares Lalong winner. That's all the news on the matrix. Well, let's take a look at the next paper, which is the New Telegraph newspaper. Oil production such boosts ex an external reserve by $214.04 million. You can find details of that story inside the paper. And we have power generation hit 5,060 MW, highest since September 2022. Well, we hope with that we will not begin to hear Greek lock again since it has gone up. You can find more of that on page 8. Other stories still on New Telegraph newspaper. Terrorists use transport network to penetrate violence. This is coming from the federal government. And on the Plateau Senatorial seat, PDP lose to APC Lalong over refusal to obey court orders. You can find more of that story on page 5. Labor declares total action against EMO at midnight, which is from today. Also, NU. NULGAC creation of more local government talking about Nuge. You can find more of that story on page two. And a big story on Saturday's Goober. We will notify results where there's violence coming from INEC. Says it won't return such polling unit for election. IGP birth quiet security outfit from election duties restrict vehicular movement. 
ban security escort from polling polls and then three DIGs to take charge of security in Bayelsa Iman Kogi. You can find more of that story on page two and four. And also on market dynamics, other liable for new fuel high coming from Ipman. NMPCL launches new neighbor grade crew of, of crew. You can find more of that on page 8 and 25. Lagos Gubapo appeal court reserve judgment in Labour Party and PDP's appeal. Details found inside the paper. Court jail community leaders five years for leaking or shown ex speaker ritual video. You can find that story on page 31. Senate probe loopsidedness in federal government recruitment and deployment. Condemns Israel and Palestinian war calls for two state solution. Advocate punishment for firearms misused by custom personnel. You can find on page 3, 5, and 7. Reps vow to end terrorism financing money laundering. Obi urges Nigeria to join in tackling Africa's illicit financial flow. Well, I hope that Reps is serious about tackling the issue of terrorism financing and money laundering. You can look up that story on page 2 and 3. And we also have a study that says hope at finger prick test detect brain tumor. You can look up that study on page 27 and that's all a new Telegraph newspaper. On Nigerian Tribune, reps lament resurgence of Boko Haram attacks in Borno and Yobe state. Tinibu will shock currency speculators statement coming from presidency. CBN targets 95% access to financial services coming from the CBN governor. Labor orders immediate shutdown of Emo nationwide strike November 14. Perpetrators of attack on NLC president must be brought to justice. Statement coming from CACOL. NPA launches $1.1 billion port rehabilitation plan to start with a Papa tin can ports. Israel-Palestine war sending six ceasefire asks federal government to press for two-state solution. And an analyst saying as battle for Lugard House speak who becomes next Kogi governor. You can find more details on page 17. Senate asks customs CG to investigate extortion at nation's borders. You can find more details on page 28. Still on Nigerian Tribune, three killed in Kogi. IGP wants troublemakers to relocate from state before elections. The writer under the story give peace a chance for successful, credible poll. INEC appeals. Why we will win Kogi by outside Imo Guba polls. A statement coming from PDP. You can find details on page 8, and that's all the news on Nigerian Tribune. Well, before we continue further with other paper analysis, I think it's important that we take a break at this moment, let you through the stories. We'd love to hear your own feedback, your own views, and your own concern about the stories on the paper. When we come back, we'll open the phone lines and then hear your own views on it. Please stay tuned with us. Democracy is the theory that common people know what they want and deserve to get it good and hard. Join me every Friday, 7 p.m. on National Talk for analysis as well as in-depth perspective on issues as they unfold in and around Nigeria, as well as an opportunity to add your voice. Thanks for staying tuned. It's still the daily. So now, for television, we've been looking at a number of stories where NLC have promised to start the total shutdown, talking about strike on November 14, which is next week, Tuesday. But they are starting the strike in Imo State today regarding some of the pensioners and also civil servants that have been declared as ghost workers.
And we're also seeing that the battle for the state is actually on, where we're seeing Kogi, Bayelsa, and Imo headlock. So we would love to hear what your own views are concerning the stories on the paper. Please do remember, turn down the bottom of your TV set when you call us. Try to summarize your point in a minute so other people can also get a platform to air their views on story that is relevant to them. I say have Rachel Tenzi with me in the studio. Thanks so much, Rachel. You're welcome, Selen. All right, before the calls come in, let's take a look at the Daily Sun newspaper. Another bloodbath in Bainui and Castina with a writer saying gunmen kill 15 and abduct 5. Well, I just don't know what is happening. It seems um, where the insurgent is coming up again and... We're having Yobe, Bruno now. We're having that in Benue and also in Castina. Well, we hope security agency will spring up into action and also look into this issue. The big story here says labor declares war. Begin striking Emo today. Other states on Tuesday reveal breach of agreement with the federal government. Gross include attack on Ajero. You can find more of that story on page 6 of the Daily Sun newspaper. MPA said 2024 deadline for the $1.1 billion port rehabilitation plan. And on Plateau South, appeal court sack PDP Senator declares Labor Minister Lalong the winner. You can find more of that story on page 26. Can Woods play opposition to government act Bishop Okon is saying that. You can find that story on page 27. Israel forces to allow trapped civilians leave Gaza City. We'll take over Gaza security after war. You can find more of that story on page 26. Jonathan and others ask for re-election of D-Ray as the PDP ends campaign. More of that story came be found on page 20. Embass NYSC certificate, PDP berate NYSC and demands apology. We will shock currency speculators. This is coming from the presidency. Country going through economic challenges. This is coming from the CBN. More detail found on page 25. Ex-African president government to meet in Abeokuta on democracy with the rider to examine success, failure of Western, Western democracy on the continent and to propose the blueprint for governance model for Africa. Where I was tempted to say it's late, but I'm happy it's coming up a time like this. You agree with me, Rachel, with the number of coup we've had in some of the African countries. I think it's very imperative that ex-leaders meet and they should be able to share some of their knowledge with the present leaders. How were they able to lead in these various countries without having threats to actually seeing the likes of um, coup coming up? But then we're beginning to see that with these leaders that we're having around, a lot of things are not going as planned who left, right and center. We had that Rwanda where he had to even shuffle some of the, you know, his cabinet and to, all of yeah. that. So you, would, you agree with me that there is a need for them to revisit and see some of their failures, some of their success and how they need to do better. You know, somebody was saying that maybe it's in the African gene to actually practice monarchy. That we're used to, you know, governing by force and then maybe democracy is not for us. But I mean, that calls for a debate, and I hope that our leaders will be able to meet in Abekuta and to decide some of the failures, what the leaders are not understanding about the people, mm -hmm. and how we can practice democracy, how it's best suit us in Africa. We do not have to copy other Western countries, but let's look at which part or which leadership best suit us as Africans, and then how can we have peace above all, because with all of the whether it's blood or not blood, whatever it is, I believe that it really calls for a revisit on our leadership and then to know how we can govern and how we can lead our countries best. Tell them to we prove to not tolerate corruption in Africa, I don't think any form of governance will work for us, be it monarchy, be it the political, be it the everything that is supposed to work for us because we have war powers that are thriving on the monarchical system of governance mm -hmm. and it has worked for them. And we are also looking at other world powers that are thriving on democracy mm -hmm. and it's we it well. is working for them and it is not working for us. So the question is, what is our mindset, Sele? What are we thinking or what are we 
building for ourselves when it comes to leadership because it has proven to be what has failed us because we find ourselves in position with more resources than a lot of these countries that are controlling the economy of the world and we are still where we are because when you look at the reason behind a lot of these coup is bad governance if only governance was moving smoothly and well for decades in these countries and people saw significant amount of growth and had no reason to question the governance or feel there is a need for change of power we won't be where we are so we must tell ourselves the truth concerning how we we treat governance in this country and there is a lot of fault in the system and i believe corruption is that problem that is eating us deeply where we have a system that tolerates a lot of things that shouldn't be tolerated in the first place we allow a lot of we allow a lot of things go we let power to take control of us we let money selfishness greed to be the order of the day that even somebody that is not yet in power is thinking of the money they will embezzle when they eventually get to power We've seen where a politician is being interviewed and asking, why are you switching from this career to another career? An interview from a politician that was switching from a different pro profession to another one. And when he was asked, why do you want to go into politics? His answer wasn't to make change, it was money. And this was an interview that everybody have seen it at that time. And imagine this kind of mentality. And still, yeah, we voted that person into power, despite the person telling us that they want money out of politics, not saying, I want a different Nigeria. I want my community to move. No, no, no. That wasn't his agenda. And still yet, we voted for that kind of person. And that has been the thing over years, over years. We have people coming giving us unrealistic promises and we are being carried away and then you wonder maybe maybe we are not educated enough to know when people are being honest or not or when people are giving us goals that we can it's a lot of problems Sally. and i just hope that when eventually these leaders sit down and they speak Maybe the present leaders will listen, but let's not also forget that these past leaders, I hope it only comprises of leaders who really did well. We don't want to see past leaders that didn't do well, sitting down and trying to deliberate and say a way forward where you didn't function during your time. Because we had so many leaders in the past that might be called great but brought their economy down to the level where it is now, that we're also into money laundering, that we're also as guilty of doing one thing or another that could have changed the course of their country but has left it in this specific place. So it has to be leaders with perfect, very good enough track record to sit down and try to advise because Sele, if I am the current president of Nigeria and then I am having a president who didn't do well giving me an advice, I am most likely not going to take that advice from that person. So it just has to be from leaders that truly did something significant for Africa mm -hmm. and then believe others will be able to listen to them. Well, I just hope that whatever blueprint they will be coming up for the modern of Africa, whatever blueprint they will be coming up, I mean, you make mention of quite a number of points, and I think if only the leaders are listening, maybe they should jot down some they of these points, yeah. because it's very, very important that we look at the mindset. And then over the years, we've had leaders that think, uh, you know, I've always said it here, Richard, the fact that a number of leaders we've had, not just in Nigeria, but in Africa, are leaders who think about yourself first. They and do. not think about what they can do for their nation, what, how they can build their nation to be better. And over the years, we've had leaders that feel that being in leadership is to be served, mm -hmm. not for you to serve not the people. You so serve, yeah. when you realize that leadership is about you serving the people, when you realize that leadership is about giving back to the society, a number of these leaders don't even go back to their communities, their local government areas where they were being trained. Sometimes if you go to the school, some of these people actually pass to you, wonder, but you went through this school, how come you're not coming back to give back to the society? So we are hoping that as they deliberate on this blueprint, mm -hmm. we are truly hoping that Africa will become a better continent for people. I mean, we can be the picture that other continents we want to, you know, copy and see that. I mean, Africa is beginning to yes. grow. Well, because we have all that it takes to actually thrive as a continent, we but do. then we've allowed greed, corruption to actually sweep over us. Well, let's look at the last story on the paper here. It says, Guba polls, we are confident of victory in Bayelsa. 
Emo and Kogi. This is coming from the PDP confined on page 20. We have a picture screen here that said representative of the Solid Solidarity of the Federation and Permanent Secretary, Minister of Justice, Mrs. Gladys, and then Cybercrime Unit of the Ministry, Mrs. Jamira, and others during the Cybercrime Awareness Walk in Abuja yesterday. You can do well to grab the paper in more detail of any other story that is of interest to you. On the Punk newspaper, NNPCL unveils new crude grade ships 1.9 million barrels. Over $700 million remains trapped in Nigeria. This is concerning the foreign airlines, and we hope that these funds are being released soon. You can find details on page 20. Nigerians lament as Canada suspends Abuja embassy operations. You can find more details on page 7. The big story on the paper, off-season elections, crisis rocks, peace meeting, NLC strike threatens emo poll. Traditional rulers flee as parties beaker, labor, plants, airport, and power shutdown. IG deploys new CPs, three killed in Kogi as INET rejects call to remove Emo wreck. Battle for Bielsa, Jonathan Deary Silva canvases vote where we can see a picture story showing that. You can find details on page 7. Five jailed for sharing Oshun ex speaker's nude video. Certificate Reketering Lagos Assembly probes lasso. Israel Hamas saying it demands ceasefire. U.S. rejects Gaza occupation. You can find more details on page 16. And that's all the news on the Punch newspaper. On the Vanguard newspaper, on the oil and gas manufacturing, gets 55.5% of loan in the first half of 2023. You can look up that story on page 19. I won't wholly really sign agreement, WK declares. You can look up that story on page 4. And the big story here saying Naira Tinubu will shock currency speculators. This is coming from the presidency. Says reorganization of banking sector coming for stable and stronger Naira. Target bringing Naira value to 500 Naira or 600 Naira. Top strategy proprietary. Okay, I take that story again. Top strategy Priority is to push financial inclusion above 95% coming from the CBN. Note financial inclusion currently stand at 64%. Pay greater attention to debt reduction instead of currency speculators. This is coming from Adore. You can find that on page 5. Benue Gam War escalate 10 killed in motorbikes and tricycles. You can find that story on page 6. Can PFN NGI urges caution as ICC rank Nigeria among what was uh, persecutors of Christians in 2023? You can find that on page 9. And we also have NNPC Ajeto JV introduces NEMBI crew grade to oil market in London. Nigeria situation deplorable but not hopeless, says Can and the Can primates and others. More detail found on page 4. We also have a picture story here where we can see Nigeria at the UNESCO section in Paris. Well, we hope that after that session, they will come back and make impacts here in the country. We have other stories on the front page of the paper. You can do well to grab the vanguard and read any other story that is of interest to you. On this day newspaper, NPA launches Audacious $1.1 billion plan to rehabilitate 100-year-old Tinkan Island ports and others discloses 25-year port master plan. NNPC Iteo Venture launches new crude oil grade to compete in Europe. You can find more details on page 9. And I think it's a good thing that we are, become, we are apart from the bony light, we are also discovering a new um, crude oil grade. We have on cervical cancer in Nigeria, governor's wives committed to tackling barriers, upscaling HBV vaccination in the country. You can find more details on page 6. And if you're yet to get your vaccination, please do go and get it. Labor commences indefinite strike in Imo State. The writer under the story saying to shut down Ori Airport threatens to begin nationwide industrial action November 14. We have Adeburua urges TUC NLC to declare total strike. Say sustainable administration has no regard for labor. You can find more details on page 9. 
The big story on the paper from Yakubu, results of polling units with record of violence will not be counted. Labour Party PDP Guba candidate stage walkout during INEX stakeholders meeting is happening. Imo State demand removal of resident electoral commissioner. Don't test our resolve. IG wants troublemakers in Bielsa, Koki and Imo. Orders restriction of movement on election day. Deploys three DIGs to man elections in three states. You can find more details on page 9. Another downside by Elsa Paul Deary deserves another term, says Jonathan. You can find more details on page 43 in that old news on this day newspaper. On the Guardian newspaper, we have 31 Governor Sean Amendment, Financial Autonomy for State Assemblies. And we're having the states here, the 31, and then the other ones that are green are the ones who have taken full autonomy, who have given their state assembly full autonomy. We have all your Lagos, Plateau, Nassau, and Delta. And then those that we're seeing are being colored with brown are those who have, have given their state assembly partial autonomy. And then the ones that are on white are those who have no autonomy whatsoever. So you can do well to look closer and then to the governors. We hope that they begin to look into giving the state assembly full autonomy in their various states. Federal government begins 40% revenue deduction from Nigeria universities. You can find that on page 3. Israel Hamas war Senate not federal government on ceasefire call. Lagos Assembly summon commissioner, VC and others over certificate racketeering. More can be found on page 5. And NLC TUC threatening nationwide strike November 14. Also, we have only three states score excellent in the ICANN audit ranking. There was, uh, they had a the summit recently, and we've seen that only three states actually score excellent. So for the rest of the state who did not have a very high ranking during the auditing ranking, it is imperative and important that they look into how they can be excellent when it comes to auditing. You can find more of that on page three, and that's all on the Guardian newspaper. On leadership newspaper, parties deploy 130,000 polling agents for Emo by Elsa Kogi polls. Niger demands 13% derivation from hydroelectricity. And we have numbers 4.3 trillion narrow crude oil stolen in five years statement coming from the federal government. OB rejects Supreme Court verdict on Tinibu's victory. This is a trend. You can find details of both stories on page two. Labor orders shutdown of Emo begins total strike Tuesday. Governors have refused to sign 5,000 dead warrants. This is coming from prisons. You might want to know why they haven't signed that on page 7. The big story on the paper, 65 years retirement age. Civil servants grab teaching jobs to remain in service. Director manipulates posting to Abuja School. Education Ministry declines comment. You can find details on page 4. Kano approves 40.3 billion naira for roads, flyovers, and others. Lalong Ibori's daughter wins National Assembly seats at appeal court. Troops kill 10 terrorists, recover arms and motorcycle. Israeli troops in heart of Gaza war held um, lament level of death. You can find more details on page 22. And that's all the news on Leadership Newspaper. All right, let's take a look at the Sweet Crew Report. And on Sweet Crew Report, we are having 13% derivation. Oil producing state share 28 billion naira in one month. You can find more detail of that story. And also we have local challenges frustrating Nigerians' effort to grow gas supply. This is coming from ECO. You can find more of that. And the big story for the Sweet Crew Report says Nigerians earning from the PPT loyalty Deep by 36% to 216 billion naira. NNPC to supply Dunkwete refinery six cargo of crude oil for takeoff. You can look up that story inside the paper, and that's all on the Sweet Crew reports. On Punch Spot Extra, we want Mr. Randy, women footballers, back Falcons coach for contract renewal as the Nigerian Football Federation food drags. You can find more details on page 6. Pesero backs of Sime to return stronger. Chugese ruled out of World Cup qualifiers. Desas amazed by absurd Eagles competition. 
Danilo Strike Sings, um, Bulgrana. You can find more details on page 8. Joshua Not Interested in a Grano Fight. You can find more details on page 2. Chelsea could have signed £20 million Bellingham. Ten Hag removes Sancho from United WhatsApp group. I won't stop taking risks. A statement coming from Onana. You can find more details on page 5. And at the downside, lobby not under pressure to win NPFL. And we have Post Google slams VAR after Chelsea defeat. You can find more details on page 4. And that's all the news on Point Sports Extra. Right, let's round it up with the Business Day newspaper where we have Nigerians can afford drugs on high import tariffs. You can find more of that story on page 2. And the big story here says Naira Rescue hangs on oil sector revamp. You can find detail of the story in the paper. Nigeria startup trail peers as funding tickets extend deadline. Federal government can't continue to signal hardship is for the people alone. This is coming from Peter's side. Demand for business developers spike amid economic woes. More of that story can be found on page 31 of the Business Day newspaper. And that's all on Business Day newspaper. And also how far we can go on the program this morning. Thank you, Rachel, for You're doing welcome, this with me. And also thank you to our viewers and supporters for always keeping the day readers on this program. Until we come again, do have a blessed day ahead.